The broadcast ministry of Christ Way Fellowship brings you victory for today. Exalting the Savior, evangelizing the seeker, and equipping the saint. Committed to the principle that you can have victory today and every day through Jesus Christ. Jesus said, I have come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. And now, here's your host, Pastor Wayne Duncan. Well, hello, friends, and welcome to Victory for Today. Have you ever heard anybody say something like this? Well, I can forgive, but I can't forget. <laughs> Henry Ward Beecher said, when anybody says something like that, what they're really saying is, I'm not forgiving anybody. <laughs> that was a paraphrase, but <laughs> I think you get the drift. When someone says that, they are saying, really, I, I can't forgive. But you know what? The Lord wants us to be forgiving. He wants us to be merciful people. And I want us to go to the Scriptures to prove this out today. And I have the Bible here with me open to Matthew chapter 5 and verse 7. Matthew 5 and verse 7. So if you have your copy of the Word nearby, you can open it there or just be prepared to go there later to study this on your own. But listen to what is said here. Now, <clears throat> we know that, I'm sure you know that what what portion of Scripture we're in here is what's called the Sermon on the Mount. That's by far the best known sermon ever given. And the part of it that we're looking at, this one verse is coming from, is the part that's called the Beatitudes. Now this is a very familiar ground for a lot of people. But look, let's don't let it being familiar keep it from being fresh, okay? That's one of the hazards about these scriptures that we know so well is we know them so well we we just uh, kind of glide over them but they're meant to be fresh for us every time we look at them so here we are in Matthew chapter 5 verse 7 and it says this blessed are the merciful for they shall obtain mercy now when we look at these beatitudes I know that you have probably learned this before, but let's review that Jesus here isn't speaking about different kinds of people. He's not talking about seven different kinds of people. He's talking about different aspects of each individual believer. These are the traits, the qualities that he hopes to see in his followers. Now, when, when we think about being a follower of Christ, that's a good way to put it because the things that we find here, he already modeled for us. He was the perfect model for these things that, that he's asking of us, that he's putting before us. So when, when we see one of these things like being merciful or uh, uh, being uh, poor in spirit, being... Uh, a mourner, and so forth, we realize that Christ has already lived through these things. He was long-suffering. He was merciful toward people. He was patient with people. Even uh, people in error, people that were, uh, uh, if he's patient with people in failure, thank God for that, and patient with people's personality and their traits. I uh, was thinking about when Andrew brought his brother Peter, Simon, Simon Bar-Jonah, to meet Jesus. And he brought him to Jesus, and Jesus said, Simon, son of Jonas, I will call you Cephas, which means Peter or the rock. He was, he was saying, Peter, when I look at you, I'm going to call you the rock because when I look at you, I see a rock-solid kind of guy. Well, I don't know who else was there, but Andrew was there. And if there had been any others, if James and John had to be, or happened to be there, they had to be cutting their eyes around toward each other or giving each other the elbow because 
they knew if, if Peter was anything, he was not a rock-solid kind of guy. He was, he was very, uh, you know, he, he was uh, very volatile. He was the kind of guy that uh, he had a lot of rough qualities. Someone said that the only time he opened his mouth was to change feet. You know, he was that kind of a guy. Maybe you and I can identify with that. But Jesus saw him as a rock-solid kind of guy. In other words, Jesus saw in Peter something that others had not seen. And, and he looks at you and me, and he sees things in us that others, even ourselves, maybe haven't seen. I, I was thinking about this this morning that, you know, I, I'd like to ask Peter sometime up there one of these days when we've, uh, during eternity, just to ask him, Peter, what was it that made you love Jesus so much? And I would not be surprised if it was not this, that the reason Peter loved Jesus so much was that Jesus believed in Peter and that he saw something in him that nobody else did. Be interesting to know. Well, he puts up with us. He's, he's, patience with, he's patient with us. The Lord Jesus is patient in our failures, our foibles, our foolishness, our stupidity. <laughs> he's patient with us. He's merciful. He's modeled this thing of, of mercy before us. He's modeling this patience, this mercy, this forgiveness for us. He was, in, he was forgiving in spirit toward those that wronged him. You know, we find in that scene where Jesus is being crucified, cruelly, cruelly treated and, and just uh, tortured, being put to death, that he hangs there on that cross. And the amazing thing about his crucifixion from a human standpoint, from the way the soldiers saw it, was that They'd crucified a lot of people. They'd never heard anybody say this, and that is, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. So Jesus spoke forgiveness and asked forgiveness for those that were putting him to death in such a cruel, cruel way. So in every way that you can think of, Jesus has modeled this thing of showing mercy, of being forgiven, forgiving. Uh, he, he's modeled uh, true compassion for us. It seemed like everywhere he went, there were hungry people. And Jesus fed the hungry. He, was, uh, he went around doing good and helping people. You know, sometimes we get to the place with people that, that the last thing we want to do is to be merciful toward them. The last thing we want to do is... Uh, is to be forgiving toward them. Sometimes our anger just wells up in us toward uh, people, and 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 it, and it just leads us to say and do things that are, that are even ridiculous and silly. I, I copied this down. I wanted to share with you because it sort of takes this anger thing and and to and to an extreme. And by the way, this is a true story. The the names of the people involved here are given, but I'm not going to give them. Friday was a normal day at First National Bank, and I will say the town in Homestead, Florida, when a certain customer <laughs> came along. This customer drove into one of the drive through lanes to make a withdrawal. He and the teller had a lengthy and heated discussion about a check of his that had not cleared. As the discussion went on, the customer became more and more irritated. <laughs> you ever been there? <laughs> he finally gave up and asked if he could just close his account. The teller told him that he could, but he would have to see the manager inside. The customer said that's what he'd like to do. But the problem was that the inside of the bank had already been locked for the night. At that point, the customer backed up his truck, pointed it toward the front door, <laughs> crashed through the glass, parked his truck, and walked in to see the manager. When the police arrived, <laughs> 
they found this customer sitting at the manager's desk. This is the story of a guy who had it with the system, said the police officer who made the arrest. We can sympathize, but we don't drive through banks. He got fed up, but he never got his money. You know, dear people, uh, things like that, and may, may we never <laughs> fall that far into our anger, get that filled with our anger. But it, it just kind of illustrates how we can get so uh, uptight about things that, that being merciful and being kind, being compassionate, being forgiving toward people is the last thing on our minds. But you know what? That's not the way Jesus was, and that's not the way he wants us to be. He says here that, Blessed are those that are merciful because they will receive mercy. They will obtain mercy. Now, do you want mercy? Do you want compassion? Do you want forgiveness? Do you want all these things? Dear people, look. The way we get it is to give it. In this same sermon that we're looking at, this Sermon on the Mount, Jesus taught us how to pray here in this model prayer it's a, two, it's a chapter over here. And he said, uh, pray like this. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Now get this. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Now he goes on and finishes the prayer about being led not into temptation, but delivered from evil and so forth. But I want you to notice that after he gives that model prayer, the only thing that he commented on, the only thing that he emphasized from that model prayer was this matter of forgiveness, being merciful. As a matter of fact, listen to this, verse 14 of chapter 6 and 15. He says, For if you forgive men their trespasses, if, if you forgive your Men, their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you do not forgive men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. We're talking about some serious stuff here today. And a little bit later on, Jesus told a parable. That's an earthly story with a heavenly meaning. And he told a story... A, a, a heavenly story told this parable about one that uh, this paragraph is headed, the parable of the unforgiving servant. We call it the unjust servant. Then Peter came to him and said, Lord, how often shall my brother sin against me and I forgive him up to seven times? And the Lord said to him, I say to you, not up to seven times, but 70 times seven. In verse 23, he says this, gives this parable. Therefore, the kingdom of heaven is like a certain king who wanted to settle accounts with his servants. And when he had begun to settle accounts, one was brought to him who owed him 10,000 talents. That's a huge, huge amount of money. There's been people that have translated that into today's money. This is a huge amount of money. But as he was not able to pay, his master commanded that he be sold and his wife and children, and, and all that he had, and that payment be made. The servant, therefore, fell down before him, saying, Master, have patience with me, and I will pay you all. Then the master of that servant was moved with compassion, released him, and forgave him the debt. Doesn't end there. Next verse. But that servant went out and found one of his fellow servants who owed him a hundred denarii. That's like $20 to a million dollars. And he laid hands on him and took him by the throat. He got a handful of his neck saying, pay me what you owe. So his fellow servants... Uh, so his fellow servant fell down at his feet and begged him, saying, Have patience with me, and I will pay you all. But he would not. But he went and threw him in prison till he should pay the debt. 
Verse 31, so when this fellow servant saw what had been done, they were very grieved and came and told their master all that had been done. Then his master, after he had called him, said to him, you wicked servant, I forgave you all that debt because you begged me. Should you not also have had compassion on your fellow servant just as I had pity on you? And his master was angry and delivered him to the torturers, the tormentors, until he should pay all that was due him. Now listen to what Jesus, how Jesus concludes this parable. So my heavenly Father also will do to each of you who does not forgive from his heart his brother his trespasses. Dear people, this is serious. This is some serious stuff that we're thinking about here today. Now, let's just look at this in some detail with the time that we have to study together. He, he, here's a story that Jesus told about a servant that owed his master a huge amount, a huge amount, and he was forgiven. Yet he would not forgive his fellow servant who owed him just a small amount. Just a small amount. Now this, my dear friend, is the grounds. This is a way of expressing the grounds for our forgiveness of others. When we talk about forgiving someone for something that they've done to us, very often the first reaction that we have come back is, well, they don't deserve forgiveness. They hurt me deeply. Now, folks, listen. The purpose of what we're talking about today is not to minimize the hurt that you have suffered, but it's to maximize the goodness and the mercy of Almighty God. So I'm not going to minimize what may have been done to you. It may have been something terrible. It may have gone on for a long period of time. But we forgive not based on their, them deserving their forgiveness, not on them asking for forgiveness, but on the fact that God has forgiven us. You see, this master forgave that huge, huge debt. And then that servant wouldn't forgive his fellow servant just a little, a little small debt. You see, it ought not to be that way. We need to forgive freely and openly. We need to be willing to forgive those that have trespassed against us, not minimizing the suffering you went through, but maximizing what Christ did and went through for us. See, that's the ground. I'm repeating myself, I know, but I want to get this point across. That's the grounds for our forgiveness. Not that a person deserves the forgiveness, not even that they ask for it, but the ground is that Christ has given so much for us. So here's the grounds for our forgiveness. Now, I want you to notice some details here. This servant that wouldn't forgive, I want you to see this. Look in verse 30. His fellow servant begs him to forgive him. And verse 30 says, and he would not. He would not forgive. Would that has to do with the will. It didn't say he could not or he should not. It said he would not forgive. He wouldn't forgive this servant. So let's learn this first thing about forgiveness. Forgiveness is a matter of the will. It's not a matter of the emotion. You know what I said in the beginning uh, when people say, well, I'll forgive, but I won't forget. You know, the truth is we really don't forget. Uh, we forgive, but we may not be able to forget what's been done to us. The emotion, maybe what was done to us was so, emotional, uh, so emotionally charged that it, it made a scar on us. But you know what? God can heal our scars. If we'll do things God's way. You see, it's like the little illustration of the, the train. There's the, there's the train. There's the engine. That's fact. There's the coal car, that's faith. And then there's the caboose, and that's feeling. 
<laughs> I think you're probably getting the, getting the uh, understanding here already. You see, the fact is what God said. God has said that we'll receive mercy when we are merciful toward others. That we will receive forgiveness when we forgive others. And so we hear what God says. Now we can either do one of two things. We can receive it or we can reject it. <coughs> Excuse me. If we reject that, we're going to be like this servant that we're studying about here in this parable of Jesus. When we don't forgive, we're being disobedient to God. He would not forgive. Didn't say he could not. Didn't say he should not. Said he would not. It's a matter of the will and not, <coughs> excuse me again, and not a matter of the emotion. It's a matter of the will. We will to do His will. We bring our will in line with God's will when we do things God's way. When God says that we're to be merciful and to be forgivers, then we bring ourselves into that place of forgiving those that have harmed us and hurt us. We forgive them whether they really deserve it or not, no matter how bad that thing might have been, no matter how slight it might have been. This man, owed, he owed a ton to his master. And, and, and that's, that's a picture there of what we owe to God because of the sin in our lives. So how does that compare? What we owe God, if we were to have to pay God back, you know, the wages of sin is death. But since Jesus has already paid that sin debt for us, then we owe God everything. We owe God everything. And so what, what, uh, what is it for us to forgive others for the ways they have slighted us or have harmed us? Very slight compared to what we owe God because Jesus paid it all. All to him I owe. <laughs> Jesus is the one who went to the cross for us. It's because of God's love that Jesus went to the cross for us. He's that, remember we studied last week and the week before about him being the propitiation. That is to say the atoning sacrifice for our sins. By the way, if you missed the last couple of broadcasts, I hope that you'll go online to our website, victoryfortoday.com, and catch up on that. We uh, studied some pretty important things there, and I hope that you'll go back and study that uh, online. By the way, there's a couple of hundred sermons and talks on there, and you're, uh, you have permission to go ahead and download those for yourself. You can make you a <coughs> Excuse me. You can make you a uh, make your own DVD or CD if you want to do that, and uh, just whatever can help you in your walk with Christ, or to help you to reach someone else with the glorious news that Christ saves us through faith. And so use that if you would. But go online and get that and watch it, and you'll see that He is the propitiation, the atoning sacrifice. For our sins, why? Because of God's love. And so he has shown us his mercy. He has shown us his forgiveness. And so it's up to us now, as we walk the spirit walk, to show that same kind of mercy toward others, that same kind of forgiveness toward others. Friend, listen, I'm not going to say that you're not ever going to be angry again with somebody. We all struggle with that kind of stuff. Some of us more than others. <laughs> but but look, there's a way to deal with it. And the way to deal with it is to forgive. Now what about it? What about this thing of forgiving but still having feelings? Look, when we put our, our will along with God's will, when we line up with God's will, let God take care of those emotions. And you'll find out, you'll find out in time, as you line your will with God's will, he'll take care of those emotional scars. Now, here's a warning. As much as God wants you to be free, God wants you to be in the hands of the tormentors. He wants you to wake up in the middle of the night and think about that person and just get boiling mad and not able to sleep. Whenever he does that or whenever these incidents come back to your mind, tell Satan and tell yourself, hey, that's already been taken care of because I 
as an act of my will, have placed my will under God's will, and I have already taken care of that and forgiven that person. <laughs> That's the way you handle that. And just let God work in you to heal those scars and to help you as you move on in this new way of living in this forgiving and merciful way. If you want mercy, give it. Give mercy. Now, we're getting close to the end of the broadcast, and I want to remind you again that we give Bibles away. You can receive a Bible package from us. It will have a, according to what you say, what you tell us you want, a New King James Version like this one, or a 1984 New International Version, or a Spanish Bible if you'd rather have a Spanish Bible. Along with that, in both English and Spanish, you're going to receive a DVD entitled, Who is Jesus? 20 minutes from the gospel film, Matthew. You'll receive a study guide that's entitled, Beginning Steps. Real, real simple, easy study guide. And it's for new believers, but it's great for old believers too. You'll receive a booklet entitled, uh, Have You Made the Wonderful Discovery of the Spirit-Filled Life? You'll receive another booklet entitled Eternal Life. And you can use that it, to help others to find Christ, to help others to come to know the wonderful, have the wonderful discovery of knowing Christ personally. I took some training under Campus Crusade for Christ one time, and I was helping to lead that at our church. And a lady took that training, and she took a little booklet like that. <clears throat> and one morning she was having coffee with her mother. And she said, Mother, I've been taking some training at my church. Would you mind if I shared this little booklet with you? And she went through that little booklet. It was like this one I'm talking to you about, the Eternal Life booklet. She went through that that explained how to be saved. And then she came to the commitment part. And guess what? Her mother committed her life to Christ and prayed to receive Christ with that lady. Oh, what a glorious thing. And you can use this little booklet entitled Eternal Life in the same way. So let me send these materials to you. If you want the Bible, uh, I'll send you the Bible pack. Just write in now or go to our website to order that, and I'll send it to you. If you'd rather just have just that little booklet I'm talking about, well, you can write in and ask for that, and I'll send that. I'll only send that. If you don't need a Bible, I'll just send that Eternal Life booklet or the how to uh, have you made the wonderful discovery of the Spirit-filled life booklet to you. So whatever your need is, let me know. It's absolutely free, no strings attached. Now, we are a faith-supported uh, ministry, so if you'd like to join in, you can use that same address to send your gift in. But these things are absolutely free and no strings attached. All right? Well, it's been great being with you today. God bless you. This is Wayne Duncan saying, The good Lord willing and the saints don't rise. I'll see you right here next time on Victory for Today.